good morning my name is Julie from So Unique and I will pop all the links down below where you can find me on social media uh, I'm most active on Instagram and I have an empty shop um, I'd like to welcome you to day 21 of Vlogmas well we're getting there aren't we <laughs> uh, plans for today it's going to be I think <clears throat> mainly housework today because this is sort of the last push to get all the little jobs done that I need to do. Uh, I'm going to do the rope bowl today, so that, that'll be on somewhere in the vlog. <laughs> um, <clears throat> what else? Not really sure what else I'll be doing. It just depends how long the cleaning up and that takes me to do. <laughs> I've waited till the weekend so Kevin can give me a hand, otherwise I'll be shattered. Anyhow, I had some nice posts this morning. Um, I've got my needles ready for my Land of Sweets cowl for casting on Christmas Eve. Now, I think I had a thought this morning actually, and um, all my yarns from the Advent Swap uh, from Nikki, I think, are five gram bulbs. Now, I'm sure in the Land of Sweets cowl, um, it's 20 gram minis that are used. So, I'm going to have to find some more minis to go in. Uh, what am I going to do? I think what, if that's the case, I think probably what I'll do is I've got a couple of jars of minis on my shelf. And I've got some that I had, must be two years ago, from... The Nora George Advent Calendar that um, I bought, and they're they're all pastely colours from what I can remember, and um, so I think I might have to put them in. So I might have to. Um, I don't know. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to work this out. <laughs> it might be a bit of a mishmash this one, I think. But uh, well, we'll say. I'm sure it'll work out fine. <laughs> I'll see you a bit later on. I'm also going to ice my Christmas cake today. Um, I've just got the cake out and it's looking okay, it seems to have dried out enough so I think I'll be doing that, probably be later on though I think um, when I've finished all my jobs. Uh, yeah, so I've just got my advent calendar, uh, got my nice little candle, so this was candle candle lit cabin this one. That nice I'm looking forward to putting that on. Uh, for my roses moment, I've got this nice bright yellow. That, that might do for some Easter projects for next year. And from Nikki, I've got this lovely oh, what colour would you call it? Sort of pinky peachy looking. I know it's not coming up very well on the camera, but I will try and put a photograph in. Um, of all the little bits and pieces and of course my tea I've forgotten to put my tea in haven't I? <laughs> oh dear me, I don't know Well, I'm going to start on icing my cake this could be a disaster <laughs> uh, I've got some fondant icing that's already rolled out so this should make life a little bit easier <laughs> We shall see.
another thing I've got to do today is uh, redo my candles because I mean look at this this really bugs me I've got four of them like that I mean that one's burnt down lovely look at the state of these the wicks have gone and I'm still left with plenty of wax so I've got to redo these And I'm going to share with you how I make my rope bowls. They are quite quick to do. Um, obviously, you need a sewing machine. Uh, mine's a Janome Memory Craft 5900 Quilters Companion. So I think on mine, the, the foot does lift up quite a bit more than just an ordinary standard machine. So you might need to check... Um, whether your machine foot will lift up high enough to get your rope underneath. Now, I got my rope from Amazon, but it was just a lucky guess at which one I picked. So I tried to go for a cotton one, and it's got a cotton core in, and that's what I've got. Uh, it's 15 metres long, or 49 feet and it's as it says it's a heavy duty and it's seven mil seven mil thick which perfect for my machine and I, it'll probably be perfect for most other kinds of machines so what you need to do is obviously take the plastic wrapping off first and i know some people will roll it in a ball and have it sat next to them but I can't be bothered to do that <laughs> up with 15 feet of feet of rope it's easy enough to handle and i like to use cream cotton with cream rope i mean some people will put a color thread on and if that's what you like that's there's nothing wrong with that that's fine it's everybody to their own choice um and you need to set your sewing machine to uh, a zigzag uh it needs to be a wide one i mean my machine the widest is number five so that's what i use but i bring the width down so it's closer i will do a sample on a, a dark color bit of um fabric if i can find some and then i will share that and then we'll get started oh and you will need um maybe three bobbins of cream thread as well it takes up quite a bit of thread so make sure you've got enough thread before you start this project so i've just taken the wrapper off my rope and that's how it looks so all you need to do is find your end and unroll it you will find that you've got um, a little bit of black tape on there so what we're, we're going to do is we're going to chop that off so all i do is just unravel so much just to get started really uh, right that's it now this one is actually sort of a, a flatter style of rope now it's not perfect you can see it's a little bit bitty now when I made one the other week I was coming towards the end of the the rope and it was really bitty and there were little bits of loops and all sorts and I thought oh my word I'm gonna have to chop this out but I thought no let's just go for it continue sewing and you can't see the faults in the rope at all it worked perfectly so there you go so we'll get started so that's what my stitch looks like now on my machine my machine actually goes up to seven I thought it was only five but it's seven so the length of my stitch i'm set to six and uh the width between the stitches i've brought that down so they are closer together and that is 1.5 and that is just just sort of a right stitch so we've got a little bit of black tape on the end there 
So all I've done, all you do I should say, is um, do like your running stitch across there a couple of times just to secure it. Then we can cut off. Okay, so what we're going to do, I just hope this is going to show up okay. So we're going to hold that piece between the thumb and finger and we are going to wrap it round itself. So we're going to make like a little coil. So that's how it's going to go like that. Then you need a couple of pins. And we're just going to pop that through. So it's going to go right the way through. Oops. To hold it in place. And that one's going to go through there. So that is the start of our basket. This is the start of our base. So what we need to do now is put like a, a cross of stitches are going on there cross of stitches to hold that first part in place now just be careful you don't stitch over your pins I don't know if this is going to work so I'm going to put the needle down so you do your like your back tack I'm going to go over my pin here, so be very careful. I'll just reverse it a little bit. Just going to take this out, cut off me the excess threads. Right, so we've stitched over that area, it's secure, everything's fine. Um, so just pop it back under your machine now do um, a couple of reverses just make sure you, your rope is coming off on the right hand side and what you're doing I mean I'm using an open toe foot so you've got to make sure when your needle is going up and down for your zigzag you're going from one side of the rope to the other side of the rope so it's like pulling them both together and make sure your, your needle's down if you've got a needle down button uh, it's a bit fiddly to start with but once you get going it's it's not too bad Right, so you keep going round and round like that. I mean, don't 
have any tension on this rope don't pull it tight otherwise your bottom's going to to bend um keep going round and round until your base measures six inches across don't forget though keep checking on your bobbin because you, you can see i don't know if you can see it actually mine's getting quite low now so i need to keep an eye on that um, and you can see this is growing we are now at oh what about four and a half inches so we're getting there mine's six inches across So what you could do here now, as we're doing cream on cream, is just reverse, lock your stitches in. Just take it out, out, take it from underneath your foot, and you can. Oops. <clears throat> right, I've taken this opportunity to change my bobbin thread because obviously I was running out. But this is a good time for you to check your base, make sure you've got no holes. Because when you first do this, and your stitching is going from side to side, you do you do miss on some cases. Because obviously you get a bit carried away and put your foot down, and you do lose sort of sight of where where the two pieces are joining together. So there we go. That's how it's meant to be. So now. Now I've got to the size I want, I'm actually going to start and shape the bowl now. Uh, so what I like to do is just pop a pin in just a few stitches away from um, where I've finished off. So I'm going to pop this back under the machine. I'll put my needle down. I'm going to do one or two back stitches. That's it. So now what we do is we lift the base up so it's sort of touching the side of the, the machine here. And I can see now where um, I started off to go on my curve. Once I've done a couple of rounds and then I just take the pin out. Now I'm starting to put a little bit of tension on my rope. I find it's you get a nice shape bowl because the first bowl I did it was a bit wibbly wobbly. Um, but the, the other bowl that I did, I put a little bit of tension on this. I mean, this is something you need to practice until you get you know until you're happy with it. I mean, if you don't put any tension on, your bowl will just splay outwards which is they're nice that's fine but i like my bowls that come straight up so yeah so here we go again i'll move my scissors out of the way uh i hope you can see this okay that one so you can see i'm just pulling a little bit now And I cut these threads so you can see we're coming round to the pin now. So I'm just going to stitch up to the pin. just a guideline you know marker just so I can see where where the sides start so I hope you can see this a little bit better I've just changed angles for a little bit so just hope my hand's not in the way. I apologise if it is. I'm going to take the pin out now. Just make sure the, the yarn is still flat. The yarn, the rope, I should say. So 
so basically you're just going to keep going round and round um so like i say i've put a little bit of tension on this this rope here to give a nice shape to the bowl and obviously you can make the bowl as big as you want um, but I tend to like this bowl using the full 15 metres and you know it, it's nice especially if you want it as a yarn bowl it's brilliant as you can see it's starting to ch take shape now I mean that would be a nice bowl um, I mean I know it's not massive like but it would be a nice bowl to pop on a table and I don't know, put a few nooks in for Christmas or something or just a few minis this is something that I want to show you now you can see that there it looks a bit rough doesn't it it looks like you know it's obviously probably where they've joined it um, now you can still continue and I will show you how it works right you can see just there that's the the piece now it should just stitch in okay right the bigger your yarn ball gets the harder it gets to actually sew so <laughs> you know just take your time with it and just just sort of pull this part down as you're holding on to that and you'll be fine as i'm coming to the end of my rope i have stopped at about one two three four inch um thought something right. I'm gonna just do a little bit more I'm gonna do another inch of sewing right now this loose end I've already stitched across across there so it doesn't fray so what you'll do now is you're just going to make a loop if I can show you better this way you're going to make a loop there um, oops, and push this piece into there and you're going to stitch over it I know it's going to be a little bit awkward to see but I've come to a point there and now I'm going to put the tail end under there right so i've stitched down to there and with the end bit is tucked in in there and i've just stitched over it to secure it all in and there is your rope bowl And I hope you found the rope bowl tutorial okay. It was very difficult to film um, because either the camera was in my way for sewing or it was at the side. Um, I know my hands have been in the way and I apologise for that. But I hope you get the gist of it. <laughs> I might try doing it again in the new year. Uh, uh, I don't know, I don't know if I can do it any better, to be honest, but as long as you know you get the idea, I think that's the main thing at the moment. <laughs> well, I want to call it a day now because it's getting quite late, it's taken me a while to get that filmed and edited, so I'm going to try and get this online now, get it at least exporting, and then... Uh, 
Thank you for taking a cup of tea and I'm off to bed. Thank you for joining me today and I'll see you all again tomorrow.